It is 7.04 on August 17th, and I'd like to call the order of the Townsend Housing Authority. If I get a roll call, please. A call present. <laughs> Lori's here. She's waving. Um, Lori, try the space bar. Sometimes that works. There you go. I'm here. Laura Schifrin here. <laughs> you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. And Courtney really here. Okay, great. Um, if we could do uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag with the United States of America, with to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, additions and deletions to the agenda. Um, I don't have any tonight. I don't know if anyone else does. Um, can can I just speak under? Uh, maybe I, I guess. Well, <clears throat> it wouldn't be a report, but more of a comment of getting information. Um, we can do it. We can do it under work session wherever you think it's appropriate. It's about D. Uh, DHCD. Okay. <laughs> we can go under the work session. Okay. Um, I'm going to pass over 1.6 gate for presented report since we don't have chat with us tonight. Okay. And we'll get straight into that, that work session. Okay, um, under 2.1, uh, we had the HUP next steps and goals. And under that, um, we just left this on in case we had any updates to talk about, Lori, which is the planning board um, chapter, master plan chapter. Uh, the master plan chapter was accepted by the planning board and placed into, um, it was voted, that was accepted, okay, and at our I thought we were going to have it for last meeting, but the meeting before last, I think it was a June meeting, we approved the master plan with the amendment, with the addition of the housing production plan. At Monday night's meeting, we'll be signing the master plan and we'll be forwarding it to as a signed document to the town clerk. And, and that's it. There's no... Um, it just becomes the next document that we have. There's no further approval by any other body. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the update. Um, do you want us to pull this off the agenda for now since we kind of have it? It sounds like it's um, in a good place and we don't need to talk about it any further. Yeah, I would say that that would be off. Um, and when when we get any other kind of updates about housing, and we think we want to update that amendment, we can do that. Because the planning board has already decided that they're not waiting five years. As we get new information, as we think things should change, that's what we're going to be putting forward. We'll either have a public hearing on it or whatever needs to be done. And so it's going to be updated every year, some part of it. Great. Yeah, so we can take it off our agenda. Great. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing I have is uh, under 2.1.2 is the multifamily bylaw examples. Um, so I did send out an updated version of the one, the Excel sheet, which is the bigger version of it. Um, in that, it's mostly what you saw last time, but I did add in the side yard, rear yard, and front yard. Mm -hmm. um, for almost every community, there was a couple that I was having a hard time finding the really specifics on it. So I think you'll see those are blank. Um, and I can just share that now just so that we're all um, yeah. see. <clears throat> I did want to be able to discuss that and see um, with those comparisons if we could narrow down to what we would recommend yep. for our town. And I seriously, I am not looking for meeting after meeting after meeting and not coming to any decisions to bring forward. 
that these are things that are happening now need to have changes in our zoning. Mm -hmm. It's imperative or we cannot move forward with what the governor wants us to do. And I know Michael may be talking a little bit more about, I gotta find my glasses. Um, I think talking a little bit more about the, um, you know, they eased up a little bit supposedly. I'm reducing that 750 number to another one, which just still doesn't make any difference to Townsend because we don't have any construction going on. Yeah, we we do have that on the agenda, so we can talk specifically about that um, that piece as well. Um, so what you can see here, like I said, the added ones were this front yard, side yard, and rear yard. Um, so in comparison to other other towns, you can see that in this list now. And so I think just like you're saying, Lori, I think we have to kind of look at these and decide what we want to do. Because I think there's multiple kind of avenues here. One is to talk about just our our regular kind of zoning in terms of these, in terms of does it still make sense, the lot sizes and the frontage and the yards under just a regular single family. But then we're also talking about, does it make sense to propose anything that's uh, two family or multifamily, right? So I feel like there's a few approaches to this too. And I think we need to decide, are we going to come to the table with three different things or one thing at first and multi, you know other things after. And so I think there are a few few avenues we can go here. Um, as we talked last time, the ones in yellow are just the ones that I pulled um, the specific bylaws on just so that you could see kind of how those reference the, the uh, other document that I sent you over. I know there's a lot of information here, so if I need to zoom in, I know too. I know it's a it's a lot to absorb. So, well, I think that um, see, like right off the bat, Lunenburg, who, which isn't much larger than us, really, um, mm -hmm. two thousand maybe. Yeah, I've got you know? the numbers right in here too. So, yeah, and I mean, for a two-family home an acre mm -hmm. okay for us it's two acres oh, excuse me eight acres mm -hmm. that's crazy you know and for somebody to say somebody comes in and wants to have a variance to this let's say and and it's you're you're talking about sideline which if you have a lot that accommodates a two or three family house. The side, um, the side lines are usually a little bit are smaller for something that's a, a multifamily house. We don't have. Let's go Lunenburg here. Okay, so they've got fifteen and twenty, and yeah. towns. There are these two right here. So I think they've got a residence A, which is, you know, uh, approximately an acre and residence B, which is approximately two acres, right? Their frontage is about half of ours in both yeah. of those conditions. Yeah. Uh, their yard was set up a little bit differently than ours, where ours had 50 foot front yard, where theirs was 40 foot from the center of the street. Um, and then in terms of side yard, uh, we have 15, um, their A had 15 and their B had 25. So a little bit different there. And you can see their rear yards are actually larger, um, requirements than our rear yards. But again, two family is a by right, um, zoning here. But actually, if you think about it, having more of a setback in the rear yard only allows people to have a bigger yard. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, frontage and, is a thing too, yeah. right? Yeah. Allowing frontage on the street, but still a two acre lot with less frontage can open up quite a few different opportunities. Yeah. Right. I, I really do think we have to look at, well, let's go back to history and why we're at <clears throat> the two acre minimum and 200 foot frontage. That all came into play in the late 70s while Timberley Park was being built. 
and the, the whole town was more, oh, we have to do something, we have to do something. You know, we were having too much building going on. So they restricted the building. Never changed when population went down. Mm -hmm. So you did something that was self-inflicted and ultimately hurt us in the long run, hurt the town in the long run, hurt the people who live here in the long run because there isn't any housing coming in for them to stay in town. Yep. So I think, I, I, again, I think it's like a kind of a multi-pronged approach here, right? Like if we're gonna propose some changes to our regular single family zoning pieces, right? Like frontage, let's just say, I think maybe we have to make a stance on some of those and be able to, you know, push that forward. And then there's the two family and the multi-family kind of pieces as well, which I, not saying they're separate, I'm just saying I feel like there's maybe a couple of different approaches here um, that we could work on concurrently. Well, okay, so <clears throat> fine, but I would be more interested in getting something done for the multifamily because it's a better use of the land and we have lots of single families in town. We may not have affordable, single families in town, but we do have lots of them compared to a multifamily situation, whether it be two family or three family. Um, you may or may not, well, if it's new construction, they have to do the sprinkler system anyway. Um, if it's um, three family or more, I thought it was four, but I think it's three. I think with four, you have to have start have, if it's um, four gets more strict though, from three to four, I know there's a big difference between the yeah. two. Yeah, so that, that would be my druthers. If we're gonna spend time on making a proposal, we need to include and, and be more adamant about some multifamily housing, which we have very little of. Right, I, I, and I'm okay with that. I guess my question is, do we want to try to hit all, all three things, let's say single family, two family, multifamily, or do we wanna just forge ahead right now and just work on a multifamily piece? I guess that's my question to you guys and how you feel about that. And it sounds like, Lori, what you're saying is you'd like to move ahead with multifamily, which is a fine stance. I'm just kind of posing the question. If we, ha if we have to have, if we're making a choice of what goes first, second, or third, um, yeah, my stance would be on the multifamily. But in all honesty, I want to push forward on all three. I want to present zoning changes to all three. Right, which is fine. We just need to, I just need to make sure we're, we're in agreement and moving forward that way. That's all. Okay. Yep. I don't know. Do you feel like that, Natalie, or? No, I do, because we got to think, you know, we got to think for the future. We don't really have housing in, in, in Townsend. You know, we need the multifamilies. We need to get the people into our town. We're competing against other towns. When we've got the high school, we've got the schools, we might as well we need the multifamilies because I, all I hear about in town when I go through town is, you know, looking for an apartment, looking for an apartment, and you really, you can't find them. Believe me, I know. We need that. And the further west you go, the less they have too. So, you know, I agree. I think we should shoot for all three. Honestly, it'd be crazy not to. In my, so. Yep. So the documents I sent you, the other document I sent you guys has examples from these yellow town, these yellow highlighted ones of what they have in their bylaws for two family and multifamily, just so that we can take a look at them and start to develop what we want to propose. Mm -hmm. um, and I realize we might not have had enough time to look at those. So I think what I'm asking for is for people to take a read through those um, and see, bring to the table some pieces that you do like about those um, and want to try to develop our around. I mean, Laurie, you know the town better than anybody else. You, you know, you know what the structure is in the town. You know the history of the town. I mean, you're the, you're the expert in this area as far as what this town really needs. And it's housing, totally housing. And the verbiage is how you, ex you know, how you would put it. I'm just saying. Do you want to put the bylaws on the screen? Can you uh, sh share those examples with us, please? 
So some of them are pretty long um, and some of them are very short. So let's go through. Over here. Well, let's look at it a little bit and, <clears throat> and then we can, oh, yeah. I did see this. So okay. these are set up, um, when you run through the Excel sheet, it should be in the same order as those towns are on here if I've highlighted them. Um, and I've tried to do, uh, kind of break the towns up by sheets here. So um, Pepperell, uh, super basic on their two families. It really just says that it needs to have the appearance of a single family. Other than that, they don't really say too much else. Um, in terms of what they have there, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And we're, they are our district, just in terms of these other ones may not have applied to us, um, and that kind of talks about that in the first, in the spreadsheet part. Um, Broughton, so Broughton you can see, and they had a very small table, so I can zoom in on this. Um, so what they did have um, under their RA, which applied to kind of similar to what we had, is they have two family attached dwelling that has same thing like Pepperell, has an external appearance of a single family dwelling. That's all they say in their bylaws about two family is what I found so far. Um, that's the only piece that they have, but you can see it is listed as a yes under kind of the by right zoning for this piece mm -hmm. here for the RA. Mm -hmm. um, the other two things that they had that I thought was interesting for us to consider is they do have the multifamily and I do have these bylaws pulled here. It is a special permit under, um, planning board here, or approval by planning board, not special permit, sorry. Um, and then number, this one down here, which is flexible development, um, also under planning board. So I pulled those as well um, here. And it actually, reading through that one's kind of maybe closest to the cluster housing that we've been talking about, or of those. Um, so both of those examples are in this document. Um, the flexible development is first, just based on um, the order in their, in their particular um, zoning here. Um, so we can definitely read through this. Uh, I, I think this one is actually a really nice one. Um, it is much different than the standard multifamily one. It, like I said, it is uh, seem to be based around some smaller, uh, essentially making some smaller lots, uh, like a development, but not um, the same as the ones we have seen around here typically. Um, and they talk a lot about here um, affordability, open space, um, different procedures in terms of what they're looking for uh, to be provided here. Um, you know, things on like data on wastewater disposal, you know, from engineers. So they have a lot of different pieces in here that I think um, make sense for us to look at. Mm -hmm. um, they talk a lot about the design process in here and under, really understanding the site. Um, so it's um, physical things like contours, wetlands, transportation, um, the open space and then the location of like possible areas for development. So they've kind of got that all um, done in here. And then they talk a lot about this next part, which is um, so essentially they're making smaller lots, which took me a little while to read this, but if you if you read it, they talk a lot about how to divide those lots and some in the frontage. You can see here they on um, these particular lots, they've got some really small frontage. Um, and right here, the minimum of any individual lot uh, shall not be less than 10,000 square feet. Um, so they're make, like I said, they're making small kind of a big, they're taking an area and making small lots out of it here. Um, they talk here about the minimum number of dwelling units um, for this. Um, and they do have some affordability requirements in here as well, um, as well as some uh, density bonuses for some different things in this particular piece. <clears throat> I think that all of this sounds good. I mean, I see that it says a lot about age over 55 mm -hmm. senior and then the two dwelling units adding to the density. I get, I get all of this that it's saying. I think it's a great option and we should do something like this because whatever no matter what we pass, it still has to conform to a septic design. It still has to be approved by the Board of Health. So even though something may not, may have more acreage and it may not, it may not even be able to have one septic system on it, depending on where, what location it is in town. So, 
what we've done, what this town has done, has become so restrictive because they wanted to stop development. They even had a moratorium for any permits for two years. That's what the town did. And then when they came out of it, they had a limit of 12 per year. So, our, again, I, I hate to repeat myself, but the comment I made before where the issue, the problem that we're having today is self-inflicted. So um, my recommendation would be to go with more options, knowing that it's all subject to what the Board of Health has to say anyway. Yeah. And the only, the only places you're going to be able to get more, I, I think, um, units on will be where there's town water available. Yeah, and I think it, I think that the thing that I like about this one is it does talk like I said about, um, you know, waste, wastewater disposal and, and getting, um, you know, actual engineer on board to do this. Obviously, they're, they're going to protect themselves that way. And I think that's what we need to see if we're looking right. for it. Right. So, like you said, if it can't work, then it can't work in that location. And at least here, we're asking for it to be proven from an engineer that a wastewater system can work in this condition mm -hmm. on, this, on this land. So, and we can, you know, like I said, these are just examples. So obviously if there's something in here um, that we don't want to use, we, we don't have to put it in, right? So um, they do have an affordable, yeah. this particular one. Um, so there's some, there's some description about that. Um, here, they talk about types of buildings. So they say it can be really single family, two family or multifamily. So um, they're just saying it can't contain more than five dwelling units. So they're kind of making some clusters that could actually be um, some larger houses in this as well, right? Um, we talk about roads, parking, and contiguous open space here um, and how that, how that works. In the beginning of this particular section, yep. Um, does it say what the minimum lot size is? I thought it did, and I might have gone too fast because there is a lot of info in here. I believe this one did say it originally. Because I know it went down to like quarter acre lots actually, which would be in the 40 foot frontage, it usually happens in like a cul-de-sac mm -hmm. area, okay? And then you have your open space beyond what those 10,000 square foot lots are. Yeah. Um, obviously, I don't know if they're saying that you have to have a minimum of two acres, five acres, 10 acres. Um, our, our zoning for a two family, you know, multifamily starting at eight acres is absolutely ridiculous. I think the lot size is in number five. Just scanning through it. Well, that so that one I think is when they're breaking it into the yeah that's lot itself. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't know. I think what we're trying to find is if they say like it has to be on a five acre parcel or whatever, like you're saying, Lori, right? Yeah, um, whatever development, right? You have like, to start with so much lot size. Um, yep. I mean, that's something that we could discuss on our own and, and put in there, that it has to be a minimum of one acre or say you know, one acre with water, one, you know, two acres without. Um, again, that's all because we know how the septic systems work. Yep. Okay, yep. and what you, what you need. Um, to have. There's no sense in us making a bylaw that doesn't, won't work for people. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. instead of being um, anti-building, which is where all this is coming from originally the stopping of building happening. Now we're trying to catch up with what we did. And so, yeah, I think we can do that. I think we have enough knowledge to work with the fact that we can make this work for Townsend. Yeah, I don't see just really quickly, I don't see that, Lori, but I can look um, again and just double check. And I might be confusing it with one of the other ones, which definitely has some lot sizes on them. So. Um, but I do, 
this one is kind of a nice one for um, some smaller kind of cluster housing. Let me ask you again, how, how long was this particular document? Oh, 34 pages. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty big. And we may say that some of these aren't applicable. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it is a lot of info. Um, so it'd be great if people could just kind of take a breeze through it and, um, you know, we can start to really pull out things that we like. Okay. Um, so the next one, I'm just going to keep going just because I want to give you guys a good overview and then um, we can dig into something more. So the next one is still brought in. This is the multifamily piece of it. So that was separate from the last one. Um, so this one is a little bit different. Um, so here, uh, you know, they talk about conversions um, and some other things. So I know, you know, some of that just happened here. Um, it talks, uh, you know, some other things where they are saying uh, certain sizes of square footage um, that they need in here. Um, and so, you know, again, documentation by Board of Health, right? So the same thing, Lori. So um, they're talking about some of that um, in here as well. Um, they do have some age restricted housing that that fell under this as well that they had. So here, this one talks a little bit more about a lot, um, some lot uh, sizes, but not you know, doesn't say how much they would need for it, just how much per unit they want. And then here's some more about design specifically and what they're looking for in a, in a multifamily development. Yeah, I can see where a couple of these sentences wouldn't, yep. wouldn't apply in Townsend. Yeah, and that, you know, absolutely is probably true, but yep. Okay. Um, so again, uh, getting obviously approvals here, um, what they're looking for in terms of approval. So what they want to be able to see is all here, which I think is nice to see. Um, and then the special permit uh, here for this. Oh, here you go. Lot area on this one is, is sort of here, but. Um, yeah, two acres. But that's for your, which, which section are we under the multifamily? Multifamily specifically, yeah. So it's a little bit different than the other one. Okay. okay. Um, when do you want to plan a next meeting? Because I, I don't, I don't want to wait a month. Okay. Well, why don't we and then yep. come back. Yep, I, I would agree. Okay. Uh, why don't we go through, maybe we um, keep going here agenda. Um, and let's then decide uh, another meeting date. Um, and I think from here, if we could, I guess, just ask everybody with, like I said, read through everything, try to maybe come to the table with what you think uh, would be some good changes and we can, and then we can really start to kind of piece, piece that together. And um, I think all of us can do that, that okay. part have a good discussion about that. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else anybody wants to discuss under the multifamily bylaw examples? No, I just think we need to work on that as soon as possible and get a recommendation to planning and so Okay. Okay. Under 2.2, um, I kind of put this one back on here, and I know that there is um, some stuff in the correspondence about 256 Main Street. Um, and I just wanted to kind of discuss where it landed. And I know some a, a question came back to us about this, and uh, I wasn't quite sure how to answer it at the time, um, where they were asking basically to change what we had asked for, and we had kind of formally put that answer to another board. So I didn't actually know how to handle it um, in terms of that. Uh, but I, I think with what's gone through the approval on that, I don't know if we have anything that we can really do at this point. Um, but the question came up as if 
um, they could do those bottom two units with the V dash program, and I didn't know much about it. I have to say, um, I don't think that you guys have heard of before. Mike Crowley, do you have a comment on that? Uh, not specifically. Okay. I don't think there's anything we can do right now. I don't either. I just wanted to, you know, if we, if it comes up again, or not with this, obviously nothing with this project, but if something like that comes up again, I um, maybe at some point we can just have a discussion so that I know how to proceed um, with when we send something formal like that to another board and then we're kind of being asked to change it um, by, by the owner. So I wasn't quite sure, like I said, how to proceed with that. I don't either. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a little. So we can pass over it today. Got it. Okay, we'll do. Um, 2.3 MBTA community zoning. And I know Mike, you're here to um, chat with us a little bit about that. And I saw um, go to you forwarded some information on that the other day to the rest of us, right? Yeah. So uh, it's funny, I was here to talk about something else. And then we got guidance from the state. So we'll talk about the guidance from the state first, because that's good. Um, so there was the final guidance for MBTA um multifamily housing under section three of the zoning act came out on the 10th last week um and the big change for townsend is they've created a new category called the adjacent small town um and that's for communities that have either uh, that don't have an mbta transit station in them and they either have less than a density of 500 persons per square mile or a population less than 7,000. Now we have more than 7,000 people, but we do have a density of less than 500 per square mile. So we category under this um, adjacent small town, which has some very big differences in the requirements versus this versus where we were an adjacent community before. Um, the, big, the big change is, is the results um, under the old regulations, Townsend needed to have 750 units on 15, uh, 15 units per acre, over 50 acres. Now Townsend's requirement is 178 units. So that's a pretty big change. Um, they've also dropped most of the density requirements um, uh, in both an acknowledgement of septic and that it might not be feasible to put 15 units per acre in some cases on certain locations, um, but also in the idea that like for these smaller towns, the goal is getting the housing and it, it, it's less about how dense it is. Uh, although I do think multifamily high density housing is something that uh, Townsend needs to help move forward with some of our priorities. Um, but that was a good, that was a change that allowed us to kind of like figure out what we're doing and have a more attainable goal for what we have to do in our deadline. The other change is that our deadline for complete implementation is now not 2024 anymore, it's 2025. So it's one more year to kind of put some things together and make sure that we've got zoning in place, ready to build. Um, so. That was good feedback from them. It was nice that they listened to it. Um, the one thing that was also changed that is less in line with what Townsend has had some conversations about is they put a restriction on affordable housing in these multifamily housing units under the MBTA communities. Um, it is now either a maximum of 10% or if we're pursuing a 40R program, um, a maximum of 20%. And I know that Townsend has far off its mark from its goal on affordable housing, um, and it's a priority for town. Um, and I know that the housing production plan actually put uh, a lot of emphasis in the idea of exploring some 40R programs. So it's something that we're looking into here in town for Townsend. And that actually was what I was gonna talk to you about was the main thing, but before I get into that, I wanna make sure this is all covered and we're up to speed on this. Cause this is a big, this is a big change. And even RPC is still like, we're gonna have to get back to you with some of this stuff because there's so much radical changes we're still interpreting in ourselves. Um, but that's the MBTA guidance update. So anyone have any questions before I move forward with stuff? I have no questions, but to me, it actually means what they did doesn't mean a thing. And the reason why I say that is because we don't have, we don't really have any building. So to, it doesn't matter if it's 2003 or four or five, or it doesn't matter if we change our bylaws, if we don't have any construction going on, if we're not helping people get through the process. So, you know, it might be good for job security, you know, for those trying to work on different programs and, you know, sort of moving us forward but usually at a turtle's face, it doesn't mean anything. 
I mean, I do think it's nice Something that we have done. a goal, though, where, as before, we had an unachievable goal that nothing could have happened, right? Because it just wouldn't have worked, where at least we have an achievable yeah, I mean, it's great that they listened, especially to small towns, that it isn't going to happen. It's never going to happen, you know. And just to put out there that, well, you have to pass this bylaw, but you really don't have to do anything about it. You only have to have it that you voted on having it done. It's just so hypocritical. But so I'm a little cynical about it because I just see too long what's been happening. But thank you for the report. If there aren't any, any other questions, I want to give everybody an opportunity. No? Well, that's actually a perfect transition, believe it or not, because um, one of the things that we were talking about and we've had some interdepartmental communications about um, is pursuing some 40R um, zoning in Townsend and potentially, if we can, trying to get a pilot area set up with some 40R overlay zoning at this fall's town meeting. Um, part of the reason is because we've had some communication with developers who are ready and eager to build, which is why it's a good tie-in. Um, so if we can if we can get some good zoning together and put forward a pilot project in a small area in town, we could, in theory, have construction starting in the spring, which is pretty much as soon as it could possibly get done. But that's a good starting point. Um, but we've had some outreach from some developers, and we've had some internal communications. So I'm not gonna explain all the depths of 40R to you guys. I'm happy to go over anything if anyone wants, but I feel like you guys are smarter than me. So I'm not gonna get too far into it, um, but it is a good program for Townsend in both. It gets us the density that we need under the new MBTA guidance. It's the highest amount of affordable housing we're allowed to get in these affordable housing communities. Um, and then there's always those incentive payments. So if you zone it, you get a payment. If it gets built, you get a payment. And if there's any school-aged children involved that live within those family units, um, the state pays directly to the school system money. So uh, it's got a lot of positive things for it, which is why I'm pretty sure they put it in the housing production plan. Uh, but uh, to talk a little bit more about it specifically, um, the area we're looking at, if you, if you want, I can share a screen and we can talk a little bit about some specifics. Yes, that would be great. Okay. Is this just, is this what went through the Board of Selectmen already? Is a presentation at the Board of Selectmen? No, I haven't talked to the Board of Selectmen about this yet. Was it planning? I mean, I've heard yeah, it planning. all. Yeah, yeah, it was planning. This is, this is the kind of the, the early, the, so we had the, the conversation with planning about this um, and exploring this as a feasibility option. We had some conversations with interdepartmental meeting with different committee, people, departments in town, figuring out what they would need to be involved in. You know, what can we do to, get, for example, highway and water in the conversation early so we don't have delays later on. Um, but we haven't, this is the first, aside from me asking planning if you wanted me to explore it, this is the first committee that I've come to, but you're going to see me hitting the campaign trail on this, trying to get all the folks that need to be involved involved and getting some public support so that we can get this passed at a town meeting. So, um, so this is obviously Townsend. Haha. The area that we're looking at right now is way down here um, on the, this is Harbor Mall down here. And Town Line is very close alongside Harbor Mall, but there are three lots here, which this is gonna take a little while to load. Um, there are three small lots in this area that um, we're looking at putting the overlay district uh, on top of. Two of them are currently vacant. Um, they have some wetlands on the back, but the front half is buildable. Um, and the third one is this larger lot, which has, unfortunately, most of the lot is lost in wetlands, um, but it does have some buildable area in the front. This currently has uh, residents. Um, but the primary, there's a couple of primary reasons we we're looking at these three as kind of the, the pilot test area. One, it's an area that already has a lot of high traffic. Um, so it's an area that if someone for the family's living there, they'd have access to the stores, they'd have access to the school, a lot of amenities without necessarily having to have a car. Um, it's an area that we're anticipating a lot of growth in anyway, so it's going to be something that could be explored for that as well. Um, it's got, according to, in conversation with water, in general, the most ideal places to put high density housing is from um, Harbor Pond South because that's where the best pressure is basically and the best ability to carry water forward. Um, 
and you can even even north of Harbor Village a little bit, but pretty quickly as you get off of the main roads and into this, the water, the pipes drop and there'd have to be a lot of infrastructure that would have to go in before housing could get in. And again, the idea is having some kind of a test area on a very small area um, to, to put out some zoning overlays so that we could get some stuff zoned and built. But rather than do all of MBTA communities in one single act, um, if we roll it out in a, uh, first, our first area in a smaller way, we could kind of make sure that we caught everything, that it's landing as we wanted it to and has everything included. Um, another reason is these two, these two parcels that are vacant are owned by a developer who actually has reached out to us previously wanting to build high density multifamily housing in that area. Um, but it's not allowed currently under the bylaws uh, to have, because this lot here is, um, oh, it's gonna give me trouble if I have any of town. One of the things about mass mappers, it does not like it when you have a town line on the map. So this lot is, uh, where is it? I think I went past it. Two acres. This lot is, I think, slightly, slightly smaller at, I think it was 1.2 acres. And then this lot is large, is the largest, but most of it, as I mentioned, is kind of tucked away behind these wetlands here. So it really wouldn't count. So what we ended up doing is this area, if we, if we overlaid for all three parcels, we probably would only end up with maybe three or four buildable acres, um, which is not a ton, but under our new requirements, that's a third of what we need under MBTA communities, because that would be about 60 units of our 178 um, if it was ended up being buildable. But as I mentioned, there's a developer who's interested in building in these areas. It is a good place for a lot of the infrastructure and utilities. It also has the added benefit of being kind of a little bit easier for towns and residents to kind of understand why we picked it. Most people don't realize this is part of town. Um, there's a welcome to Townsend sign that's like way over here. And uh, even, even some of the folks that work uh, in town didn't realize that this was part of town. They thought it was in the next town over just because there's a very direct transition. Um, so the idea is it's the area that we, we would expect the least amount of resistance and the most traction trying to get through a fall town meeting, which really is the big piece uh, in terms, you know, we can write zoning, we can improve infrastructure, but if we can't get it through a town meeting, we're not gonna get very far. And I think you you all, I think I'm, I think I, I would definitely agree with all of you in that we need to start addressing some of these concerns and actually getting some, some change and some momentum built. So um, we started working on some, some bylaws, working with MRPC, seeing what that's like. Uh, the 40R program has very rigorous bylaw writing program where you actually have to you take a fillable form and you have to put it in. And most of the language is, is not something you can change. Um, but it's, uh, it's kind of, so I'll, I'll I can talk a little bit more about stuff, but I want to kind of take a break and have some conversation. I see some nodding, but I want to make sure that I've got everybody on, on board and see where we're at and open up for more discussion. So if, if I may, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Lord. Um, so 4130 and 4120 are the two lots, and then there's a lot behind them? Uh, nope, 4110 is the third lot. But 40, this lot over here, um, yeah. it just happens to get really wide at the back and have a large amount of area that is behind a wetlands. So couldn't really be accessed. For building in the first place yeah but i i don't i worry about mix like splitting lots down the middle um in terms of zoning i'd rather keep it on the whole parcel or not on the parcel right uh, and as you pointed out no one's gonna allow building in you know or even try to do building in the 10 feet of standing water that's back there um so we wouldn't get the full benefit of all of the acreage but we would get a couple of these frontage acreages um so, so they're, they're, yeah. When you go to, if if you don't mind me asking, on the forty one one zero, where exactly is the line? Because isn't that where CBF landscape is? No, they're they're down at the corner, uh, right on the corner of the two. Okay, so it's, it's hard to tell because he's got. It is. Yeah. So here's the landscape of the next on the intersection of the next town over. And then there's this property here. And this property here, which 
I think is basically under the same owner, but in two towns. Um, and again, this is this would be a zoning bylaw, so it's very possible that this guy right here is happy with what he's got and doesn't have anything built. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, where we actually get for outcome from this, I can't say for sure. I'm hopeful that we could get at least 40 units in, in this area and get, then that's almost a quarter of our requirements, but only just a small piece of what we need in Townsend. But at least it would be, we could get it in. And if we could get it through at fall town meeting, we would then have another year or at least half a year before we'd have to come back with more expansion. And in the meantime, people can be like, oh, the town didn't fall down around us. We, we this, this worked and we didn't yeah. have a terrible impact. Um, start. What's that? Yeah, start somewhere. In this area, we're also uh, putting in provisions for, uh, we're exploring whether or not we can put in provisions for mixed use because this is an area that's zoned for commerce. Um, so if we could have, you know, uh, housing on the second and the third floor and businesses on the first floor, I think it would be a big win for town in a lot of people's evaluation because it would get us some housing, but it would also get us some commerce. And for those family members, especially those in the affordable housing that living in those units, the idea of, you know, you could work at the bank downstairs and just walk down to the bank and that could be your commute. You wouldn't necessarily need a car. Um, so there's a lot of uh, yeah, benefits lot of to this area. Yeah, there's, there is a lot of good things with this. Um, so yeah, thank you. Natalie, Courtney, you have any comments or anything I can help you with? It's perfect location. I mean, it's right there near the high school, right across from the high school and on the main road. I mean, on, you know, on the state road. So that's a really good location, especially if you want to go shopping, you know, with us right next door. That's my opinion. So is a uh are these two the developer that owns these they're not the same developer that that owns the parcel that next to it that the first store is sitting on right uh these these we know. parcels are owned by the same person who owns the mall oh, it is. Okay. yeah i think probably an advantage to that <laughs> yeah uh, it's one of butter we don't have to worry about so much um yeah. but i think part of his is is, is conversation is also because he is expecting some new construction in the mall in the next year and a lot of new businesses coming into the mall in the next year. Uh, he's been really working hard on this particular area of town and has sold it to some, there, then he's in conversation with some of the larger names that could bring a lot of commerce in the community. And so now he's got these two other parcels over here and he's like, well, you know what would be great is if I could get myself some more customers by literally being their next door neighbor. Um, so I think it's got, I think it's got an area that we're going to see a lot of, construction and growth in in the next year or two, even without MBTA communities. So I think it makes sense to kind of build into that and uh, also have some conversations about how we're gonna address the traffic down there, but important stuff nonetheless. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think we should keep moving forward with it because I think it is a good location. I feel like the only thing that we're really gonna get pushed back on, in, even though I know it's not in our town and not they're difficult for us to do is that traffic um, at 119 and Proctor. Um, people are, you know, that one's challenging, yeah. um, especially if we're adding, you know, a lot more people to that particular road. Um, I And like I said, I know it's not in our town. I just suspect it's going to come up. Okay. So that you're, that's an understatement that it's, yeah. it's a really bad intersection. Thank you for yeah. saying it though. Um, yeah. But there is some intertown communications about planning to try and get some uh, traffic, some funding to fix traffic in this area. I'm not going to tell you it's going to come next year because it's not my town to work on, um, but we're working with other towns and I don't, I think it would be very feasible that we could in the next three to four years see some major uh, renovations at this intersection to help with the traffic. Um, so it definitely, again, it feeds into that large conversation. And the more yeah. growth we have here in Townsend, the more traffic goes through, especially if folks coming down off Proctor Road suddenly are turning and go to the mall on their way in or going to Dunkin' Donuts and then going back out. Now they're going through the intersection twice instead of once. You really expand on that traffic very quickly. And the same is true over here. This intersection here, which is the entrance to the mall right across from the school. Um, this is another intersection that we're having a lot of conversations about. And um, for the developer with what he's proposing in this area here, 
we're having a lot of conversations like you're going to have to do some traffic intersection analysis and chances are you're going to have to do some pay to, for some improvements to that intersection if you're really hoping to get all the business you want out of coming through that intersection yeah. Uh, so yeah it has to fit into that larger piece for sure um, but that's a you're right <laughs> it's a tough place to put more because it's already bad but yeah. it's also a place that needs to get fixed no matter what so let's let's try and get it all fixed I agree. Um, both those points. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've been going through a lot of other towns, um, 40R zoning that have gotten approved to kind of steal the best tips and tricks from them. Like I said, a lot of this is actually just a lot of the verbiage is very extremely uniform because you have to start by filling out a fillable spreadsheet. Um, uh, that piece about 20% affordable housing, I, I, I had actually hoped we could get away with more affordable housing in, in these multifamily houses. But if 20% is the state cap, um, then we'll work on these to get towards our state requirements. And then when we get to that 178 houses, maybe we'll put in some more 40 R districts anyway and have some higher um, affordable housing. Um, a lot of, a lot of our regulations about things like parking and construction and trying to preserve. So for example, we have provisions that if you have a parking lot with more than 10 spaces, uh, you have to have a tree planted for every four spaces. Um, so things like that can kind of help maintain the fact that we are gonna be taking what is woodland and changing it into high density housing, which is a big contrast, um, but we wanna make it so that it at least looks like it's Townsend's version of it. Um, so um, one of the things that I found in kind of reading through the guidance, I don't know if this was there in the first draft or in this only in this final draft, is you can't have, there's a lot of restrictions on what you can put in for zoning requirements that are, that are not included in other places. So for example, you couldn't say, uh, you have to have three parking spaces per unit if the rest of your town only requires two. Um, they're really trying to nail down all those little things that folks might do to de-incentivize the building. Um, so we have to make sure that we match, but thankfully Townsend already had some great put trees in your yard zoning regulations. So we get to keep those. Um, we're also talking a lot about stormwater management and uh, green infrastructure, because that's something we already have in our bylaws and our regulations. And it certainly seems like a, oops, I'm gonna turn that off. I apologize for that. Just the alarm. Um, it certainly seems like a spot that we want to preserve that as much as possible. But um, I'm working with MRPC to draft up some language for a bylaw. And then I definitely want to come back and talk to you. And I want to talk to planning. And I want to talk to everybody about it, basically, and start getting the word out. Um, but you guys are definitely the first stop once it was like, yeah, we need to figure this out. So. Is there any in the any examples that you looked at um, any restrictions around or not restriction but anything language around the look and feel of these things being in consistent with um, you know the town's kind of architectural feel? So I haven't seen many. So one of the ones that I have modeled a lot off of is um, actually Lowell's because Lowell has one. Is one that's centered in a historic area. It's in the National Historic Downtown area. And it, there was a lot of verbiage in there about preserving historic value and not being too disruptive of the landscape, kind of preserve the character of the area, which I yeah. thought was a good fit for Townsend, even though it's not technically a historic area where we're looking at. But overall, that's kind of the vibe of Townsend. Um, so that was one of the ones I pulled a lot from. Um, and again, things like our tree regulations, I think that also does a good job of kind of being a little more representative of Townsend. Um, and from what I've gleaned in communications with others, the idea of putting in regulations about um, low impact development, which means more you know, management of stormwater on site, tends, because that's an extra cost to the project, it tends to attract developers who make higher end buildings in terms of like better quality because there's, you know, they have to have, there's a higher base cost to get started. So they want to recoup that cost. So they want to build nicer units that then can get more rent. Um, and so that was one of those ways that we're kind of like, okay, well, we can't put something in there specifically about like 
the you know too much because we don't have a lot of regulations about quality of buildings in Townsend so we can't put too much extra in but it's one of those ways that like this is one of those things the state's telling us we have to do anyway so we can use it to our advantage here um, but I liked some of them actually the, your regulations you had at MBTA it was multifamily there was some language in there that I liked and I'm yeah, gonna see if you can poach some of that for sure yeah, there's definitely some good examples of some of that. I mean, some of some of that stuff is so subjective, but at the same time, I think if we're trying to state at least what we want to achieve, um, you know, at least at least they can come to the table with um, enough information that everyone can um, evaluate that when it gets to that point in the project. Yeah. Well, the big thing about this that makes me really want to make sure we're doing a good job is. Um, so these multifamily housing in, in these kind of districts is as a right. And so there isn't a time when you come before the planning board to get a special permit, like the, in the examples of multifamily housing we were showing earlier. You still have to get a site plan review. So there's still that mechanism. So, you, you know, there's the minimum standards of safety and things like that. But it it's going to have a, a one less layer of oversight compared to a lot of the other housing in town. So... I want to double up on the on the front loading the planning so that it, it kind of makes up for that but also that's another good reason why we're exploring kind of a small tight cluster in one stage is you know if this works great well the work is done we'll do another one next year um if this we find out that this didn't work exactly as we wanted it and there was some piece of the projects mm -hmm. that we wanted to expand on to help in, with others we'll have that time to continue to make those revisions so well, I think um, I think it sounds like we're at least here all on board with that, um, and definitely you know like to see it once it gets drafted a bit more and uh, support it. Well, that's good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so as we're and I wanted to ask this because I want to you guys like I mentioned earlier, you're smarter than me when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, I mean that I'm I this is a good I I have some background in housing, but a lot of on the job learning in this, and you guys have been working on this a long time. Um, as we're putting together these revisions and languages and bylaw recommendations, where obviously the finals will get through the approval of like housing and planning and all the different committees. But I was wondering if there was somebody who wanted to be involved more regularly in the process. It sounds like you might meet more than once, but even then, you know, this chance that we might, I'm, I'm hoping that we have language ready to start having public hearings by the beginning of October to get on a fall town meeting, which is aiming like sounded like early December or late November right now. I don't know. Um, but that's a pretty quick timeline. And if, you yeah. know, I want to come to you guys more than just once. <laughs> so is there somebody who I, I, it could even just be I copy folks and send out emails regularly, or yeah. if someone wants to be more involved, I'm happy to work more directly. I think it'd be nice if you could send it, if you do have the, um, the language that you could keep us updated with it because I think it's likely that um, as folks have a chance to read it they might reach out to you um, sure and I, for us we'll maybe keep it on our agenda too so if something's come out from you that we can at least make sure um, we've had a discussion or have a have a chance to have a discussion about it here and get you back comments too okay all right that sounds good yeah, um, I, I will do that and say so what, what it sounds like from what we're working on too we might be kind of ramping up our discussions as well um so it might yeah. Give us a, a, yeah that that made me feel a little bit better I was, I was a little nervous about like major housing in towns and, and and only coming to you guys twice to talk about it so if you have a third meeting i'll be there um that's great um don't expect any updates in the next week though i'm on vacation next week so there won't be a lot of progress but it's out to mrpc and their review piece right now so it's a good time for me to step away for a week. Um, but when I come back, it's going to be clock ticking at that point. So I'm really going to, we're really going to be prioritizing this in town. Okay. Well, have a great vacation. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And I'll share, I'll share what, what we've got we're working on. These are, I will warn you, these are like at minimum 15 pages long. It's going to be a heck of a thing to put on a warrant at town meeting. Um, but again, it's, there. Uh, most of this is, you have to follow the formula for the state. Um, so we'll I'll bring your reading glasses um, and we'll, we'll get some work done. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, any other thoughts, comments under, under this before we move on? And I know, Lori, we have a piece that I'd like to add in for you right after this.
Um, the, the thing about this one is it's one of those things where if you, the town has to approve it and it become one of the things that it agrees with the state on and again, allows for a favorable um, view on the town regarding grant money. It's just another one of those steps. So I, I mean, I don't think, Mike, that you have to worry about housing authority or planning or zoning or really not being on the same page. Um, because we, we need it. Yeah, I, I view the biggest roadblock is the town meeting roadblock. Um, and so that's, but part of that is is making sure that people are involved and able to kind of understand what's happening. And so part of that is these public hearings, like this one, this is a public meeting, the other public meetings I'll be talking about. I think uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about is maybe even just having some general sit down informational chats at the library and the town hall, and just having folks informally come in and ask questions and see if we can't get some people understanding the process because it's so lengthy. No one's gonna sit down at town meeting and read it and get informed enough from it. They're gonna to react to the immense scope of it. So having, making sure people are included right along in the process, I'm hoping will make a big, big help. So. Okay. Well, again, thank you, Mike, for coming. Um, not that you can't stay, you're certainly welcome to, but uh, thanks for coming to talk to us tonight, appreciate it. Sure. Um, Lori, um, under the work session here, I wanted to add in before we get to the correspondence and clerk's announcements, I know you want to talk a little bit about um, information sharing. Yeah, and so um, Mike, this would be great, something great for you to look into as land use coordinator, and that is, um, state assisted housing with DHCD. So I happened to be speaking to the director of the Pepperell Housing Authority. And today I asked her some questions about how they got their housing. Well, I don't have the answers as to how they got their housing, but they actually just got their housing trust going. So we actually have ours now probably for about a year. And now it has properties. But in Pepperell, the housing authority is a fund is funded by the town. They have a director, they have a maintenance person, and they have um, assistant staff. They have three buildings. One was an old school that houses five families which I didn't quite understand how they got the school part of it. Cause I don't know why I was told anyway, that it was the school committee or the superintendent that um, rents out the Squanicook school and that it was not under the purview of Townsend. So I don't know if somebody can be finding out about this um, because in the housing authority a couple of years ago, three years ago, we were talking about that school, we were talking about the defunct um, treat, wastewater treatment plant, the sewage treatment plant, and, the, and trying to connect the three with the property on Dudley Road that we still had. This is when we wanted to do the veterans housing and multi-housing in with it, which got shot down at annual town meeting by the way. So we as, a, as the housing authority don't have any buildings, but the town has buildings. So two of the properties that they have supposedly, again, was a town owned building. Hopefully I'll know more for the next meeting because she said she was gonna ask the prior director of how they got the school how the, one, the two other buildings are along the river. One is a long, large red building and that has 51 units in it. That was built from the ground up as affordable units through the DCHD um, in the 80s. The, 
The school was also converted in the 80s. The building across the street houses their office, their maintenance department, and something else. <laughs> Three things on the first floor. And then upstairs is where they have 12 other units. That makes up 72 units, affordable units. Well, I don't know if they counted them all affordable, but certainly the property that was the 51 units is kind of like the 50 units we have at, 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 Atwood, at Wood Acres, okay? That was built all affordable. And I, so I'm not sure about the rest. But anyway, all, all of those are under the, um, it, it's managed by the housing authority there. So we don't have anybody here that would be managing it. However, we might be able to regionalize with Pepperell, use their same director. They might need more assist, depending on how much housing there was, they might need more assistance or another maintenance person, depending on how many units we actually got in Townsend. So this obviously is not a discussion or something that can happen tomorrow, but it certainly is seed to be thinking about. If Townsend didn't want to have its own management part of their properties, that we may be able to cooperate with the Pepperell Housing Authority and not have to reinvent a wheel. But the key here is that it's state, state funded assistance. So I'm trying to find out where did they get the money to do the renovations? How did they build that property from the ground up? It was town owned land where the other building is across the street is town owned. And the, she's saying the school that was converted into these five families was town owned. So that's what I wanted to put out for us to think about. And maybe if any, but I mean, I'll, I'll relay what I get from her for information, but if um, Jody or Mike could look into the deeds, DC, oh God, I always say it's mine, DCHD, DCHD, Department of Community Housing Development, to help Townsend. What can Townsend to do? What can Townsend present to the state that they can help us with developing housing in a certain property that we already own? You have to own a property. It has to be something that you own, and then you go to the state and ask for this assistance. That's what I got out of my conversation with her. I was trying to ask Chaz too, but he's sick. So I didn't, where he's state rep. Um, so hopefully I've thrown out a ball and you guys run with it. Thank you. Thanks, Lord. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments on that? Okay, under 2.4 correspondence and clerk's announcements. Jody, I think we only have that one piece. Um, is there anything that the decision, is there anything that we need to do with that? FYI, same thing with um, the budget. Everybody. Excuse me. Have have we switched to Wednesday nights only? Oh. Is that what happened? Um, generally we have because Nally is more available on Wednesday nights. But we can always I can let you know which dates work for me now. I've, I've been working till two, three o'clock in the afternoon now. So 
I'm not working. It's flexible right now. I'm okay. more opening the store than I am closing the store now. So okay. give me a um, Yeah, because I generally have things like, because uh, I'm looking for when we can meet again. Okay. Go ahead. And um, if we want to like attack okay. some of the stuff that Courtney has given us and okay. try to get some things that we would agree on passing forward. Okay. Um, it seems like Thursday or an off Monday that planning doesn't have okay. um, would work better. You know, like the 25th of August, I could meet again, but I can't on the 24th. Um, oh, August, okay. Yeah, the 31st, I already have um, something. What about the 1st? And the 1st, um, I'm not quite sure. I may have something on the 1st as well. Um, I already have something at 1.00. But I'm I'm actually waiting to hear from a few other people on whether we're going to meet on the first at night or the thirty first. If we're not, if we're, I could do one or the other, knowing when I know. Okay, and that would be two weeks from now if one we did the twenty fifth. I can do one or the other. All right, I actually can't do the first because I have a um, I have a project that's going through regulatory in another town that is on that night on um, the first um so i could do the 25th or the 30 the 31st but i know you said you likely have something at 31st. i think if we could um book a little time on the 25th and just work on that just do a work session we don't need all the other things on the agenda okay um it's just my thinking and we just do a work session and try to tackle this okay that sounds good to me okay yeah Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you guys all okay still meeting via Zoom uh, since we can still yeah. do that? It's fine, whatever works. Or would you rather be in person for a work session? It's up to you guys. Um, I could do either if it's easier. And um, if we may want to, why don't we um, check with, why don't I check with Chaz and just see, um, just based on his status, if he'd rather do Zoom at that time, if he can make it. Um. Okay, because what I'd like to see us have is the printed package yeah. and sit there at the table okay. and go through each line, cross out what we want, crossed out, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. Works for me. So why don't we plan tentatively in person? Let's check with Chaz, make sure he's feeling okay and is able to join in person just based on where, um, how he's doing. Okay, that works. Um, and I know we just kind of jumped for a meeting day, but we do need to review meeting minutes since we skipped that part. Um, so let's just, um, let's make sure we do that. Um, and Jody sent us over the meeting minutes from July 13th. Um, I make the motion to approve the minutes. If any corrections or deletions? I make the motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Great. Um, roll call vote, please. Have a call, yes. Laura Schifrin, yes. And Courtney Bell, yes. Okay, we're all set. Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify August, we're looking at August 25th in person. Yes. Right? Yeah. 7 p.m. Oh yeah, the room, right? We need to rent the room. I mean, um, yeah. make reservations for the room. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to go, honestly, but um, I don't know if I'm needed, <laughs> if it's just a work session. Um, but I will try and get that done tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And I think otherwise, um, is everybody okay if we keep the, the one that we had planned for the 21st? Of August? Uh, September, we have one planned. September 21st, a little later, or do we need to shift that one just That's as we're at it now? I'm good, whatever you want. Um, I think we're going to need more meetings. I think we're going to need definitely more meetings. Oh, so do you want to meet next week then, and we'll decide if we need an when we need another one. We can talk about it then. Yeah, yeah. then I could do. Um, I think I can do the 14th or 15th. 
Okay. September, so either the Wednesday or Thursday, whatever happens to work. Okay. Right now. All right. That works for me. All right. So I did it the 25th. Yeah. Okay. Do we ask Hartley? Did those dates work for Hartley? Well, well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that we need um, it's Hartley. Work. Or, I don't know, Jody, what do you want? Because, hmm. Are we mandated to have them like hi hybrid now if we just decide to do it in person? Or, like, do we have to have a Zoom link still? Not really. Oh, I guess I don't know the answer. I, I think you have to find out because I, I, I think that might be right. But if we're just doing a work session right. for this particular thing, I don't know. Can you find out, Jody, and let us know? <laughs> What we can do and what we can't do. <laughs> so we don't get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, look at Mike. <laughs> yeah, let us know. All righty. Anything else? Oh, I'm making a motion to adjourn. <laughs> A second. <laughs> All in favor, now we call yes. Laura Schiffer, yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>